the biggest scandal to rock the Francis papacy just got bigger. <laughs> now with us is the man who's been covering this scandal as it's been unfolding for months, Dr. Jules Gomez. Hello, Jules. Greetings. Greetings from Rome on this very holy and solemn day, Monday, Thursday, 2023. And it's, it's a sad thing we have to be reporting on such a story on such a holy day. Jules, for those who have not been following your extensive coverage on this particular predator priest who's up for a, 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 another round of, of reporting, give us a brief background on exactly who we're talking about. We're talking about Father Marco Ivan Rupnik, a Slovenian Jesuit. He's probably the world's most famous mosaic artist, and his work has been placed, commissioned by almost 130 major churches and cathedrals, seminaries, and houses of Catholic learning around the world. And this priest, who is a very close friend of Pope Francis, a fellow Jesuit, uh, has been responsible for perpetrating the sexual, psychological, spiritual, and even physical abuse of more than 25 nuns, Brad. Okay, so Jules, uh, now Rupnik's rap sheet just got longer? Absolutely, because uh, over the last three months, uh, Four nuns, uh, four religious sisters have testified and uh, basically blown the whistle on Father Rupnik. But for the first time now, a nun who has become a hermit uh, has broken her anonymity. Now, remember, the first four nuns uh, came forward. They gave very precise details about their background, but their names continued to be protected and re they remain anonymous. But this nun, uh, Sister Hermana Samuel, a French nun, has thrown away the cover of anonymity, and she's pointed the finger directly at her priest abuser. Okay, and what exactly is the good sister saying, Jules? Uh, now, the story, we must give full credit for this, was broken by uh, Sophie Le Brun, a very talented French uh, reporter who writes for La Vie, a French Catholic weekly. And she interviewed a sister, uh, Samuel, and this is what the good sister said. Uh, she talked about how Rupnik would go to her room, or rather he would get her to the Aletti Center, which is a, an art studio co-founded by Rupnik in Rome. And this poor sister had fled another abusive order. We'll talk about that later in, in, the, in the program. But uh, Rupnik took advantage of that. He would summon her after 10 o'clock in the night, and she says he would take her in his arms, caress her shoulders and neck, and play with the bra behind her back. Uh, this is what Rupnik told her. It's beautiful. We can do this together. Me as a priest, you as a sister. It's clear, he said, I look at you in a very pure manner. And uh, Sister Samuel says, I resisted for a while internally, but after multiple pressures and blackmail at the risk of being thrown out, remember she was helpless, I submitted one day. I can say that with him, I really experienced a grip. He entered my mind, he took control, and I was his prisoner. And this is, by the way, a common theme um, uh, told, uh, you know, the victims when they tell their story, this is a common theme. Rupnik manipulating them to the nth degree. It really sounds diabolic, Jules. Um, this is, uh, God bless the good sister for coming forward, but let's, let's pump the brakes before we get farther into this story. You've been covering this particular story with all of the many facets to it for, for, for about four to five months now. In your estimation, Jules, what makes this scandal rolling out of Rome to be the biggest, in your estimation, of the entire Francis pontificate? 
Uh, first of all, remember, Rupnik is a fellow Jesuit. Secondly, he's a close friend of the Pope. Uh, we have pictures of them celeb celebrating Holy Mass at the Aleppo Center. My sources tell me when Rupnik was uh, uh, nailed by the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, who very quickly dropped his case because they said it was uh, yeah, out of the statute of limitations, he actually phoned Pope Francis. Uh, we are also told that his excommunication was lifted in a very short time, within a month, by the direct intervention of the Holy See, because only the Holy See can lift a priest's excommunication. And Rupnik was excommunicated after he heard the confession and offered absolution to a woman he had slept with, another Italian sister. So the fact that Pope Francis, I mean, that Rupnik is still free under restrictions that he continues to break, uh, uh, he, and that Pope Francis, despite all his talk of zero tolerance, has not acted firmly, speaks volumes. And even now, the Vatican is not launching an investigation. The Diocese of Rome is actually launching the investigation. Is that correct? Uh, precisely. Uh, Cardinal uh, Angelo Donatis, uh, who is Pope Francis's vicar here, and he basically administered the diocese on behalf of the Bishop of Rome. Uh, he is another very close friend of Rupnik. I mean, this is a network of people who are all very close to each other and all protecting each other, including the Aleppo Center, which we are told functions almost like a Rupnik protecting cult. And, uh, and uh, uh, the Diocese of Rome has been under considerable pressure uh, to launch an investigation precisely into how the Aletti Center has been protecting Rupnik. Uh, Jules, we're about out of time. What else can you tell us, just very briefly, we only have about a minute left to, uh, on this particular angle of the, uh, of the, of the, of the rap sheet of Rupnik? Well, uh, remember the uh, four other nuns who have come forward to testify. The first is uh, Anna, uh, who says that Rupnik forced her into a threesome with another nun. Uh, the next second is Esther, who is working for Vatican Radio, and she confirms uh, Anna's testimony. She says Ivanka Hosta, the mother superior of the order, uh, Rupnik was associated with, covered this up. Roberta says the third Dunn says that he touched her butt and, you know, went on to do other things, talked about how wonderful it was to have the sisters in their underwear wearing transparent white blouses. He could see their bras symbolizing purity, all this nonsense. And then Clara, who Rupnik met when she was a 16-year-old nursing intern, talks about how he one day went to her rented apartment and masturbated there in front of her in the sink. So we have some pretty disgusting details of Rupnik's behavior, Brad. Now, uh, very quickly, Jules, about out of time here. Is this a, a one-off case of a nun being uh, molested by a priest, or is this, is this something that's going on more than most of our viewers realize around the world? Well, this problem is systemic and endemic because uh, a few months ago we reported on a sister, Mary Lembo, uh, who did her doctorate, uh, she's an African nun, on how this problem is pervasive throughout Africa. Priests actually demanding sex from nuns. Uh, they, uh, we then went on to report on Dr. Doris Reisinger, a German nun who was raped by a priest and who has extensively documented how nuns are forced into abortions by priests uh, you know, when they have sex and that results in pregnancies. And then in India, most recently, I reported on 26 nuns who committed suicide, hung themselves, uh, slit their wrists, uh, wrists over, uh, uh, you know, at the rate of almost one a year. Again, uh, my sources tell me because of predatory priests there. And two nuns in India have written books published by reputable publishers on this whole sordid topic, Brad. Well, Jules, uh, it's tragedy upon tragedy. Keep on shining light on the Rupnik case, and sooner or later, hopefully, justice may come of it. Thanks for being with us today, Jules. Amen, Brad. God bless you.